So welcome everyone to the next P3 episode. I hope I even remember what boot settings I used the last time because I really did not power P3 up since we last used it. So I remember I kept changing this something. I think the last bootable should have been 3.12 or not. Let's take the first one and see what happens. Hmm, something happened. Two, two, four, six, seven. The first thing I wanted to do today is check that our freshly compiled binaries do work. Why is this hanging so long? Oh, did I plug in Ethernet? No, I didn't plug in Ethernet, maybe. Yeah, the font is super small, probably also need to install some other font. The question is, this was compiled January 2014? Red ribbon, then this is probably not my kernel, I guess. Hmm, unfortunately, I have some 3.5 laying around. That would be slightly unfortunate if we used some, as oh, there was 3.5 also 3.12 but it looks like the majority of the work I've done with 3.5 maybe there was another regression in between that 3.12 didn't work so we have here indeed 3.5 all right maybe I selected this one then I probably have tested with 3.5 okay 3.5 I hope that is new enough my freshly compiled system, the problems of this light is GLIPC, as I mentioned very so often. Hmm. Apparently some USB hiccup, but it's also on the side port here. So January 2018, that is probably more what we have been doing. So then, let's see how long it subversion updates. I by the way, switch this to... Ah, this is where I had the other SSD, so the day I was looking where I used the SSD. Because ideally I could also emerge here some other console front from source to have a bigger text for you to read at home. But today we will only do the first testing here of the new binaries, freshly cross-compiled in the data center. Could already actually look in there. So let's see what the glibc is saying. I freshly cross-compiled here PowerPC64 and then var RDM logs one glibc and the kernel at least 3.2. Okay, then we are super lucky that this just fits there totally at the edge of it. So here, the one font I usually like, this is Terminus. Of course, everything is outdated after a decade, but actually it builds, okay, XOC Proto, it's slightly unnecessary and will result in conflicts as the XORG people unified all their protocol header packages to XORG Proto, we don't want this. These are the kind of automations T2 is not providing. T2 is intentionally raw like sushi in this regard, just the original source, because we want to keep things stupid simple. So while we are at it, let's... My favorite system of having a new this root in new and old and things like this, so new. Then we need port forwarding to the remote system, one second. So and then we are sync, are sync RVTP, this archive recursive verbose, what was T, uh, something, persistent and progress is something, and SSH port forwarded to 2222 localhost and then the parse that is user source something cross compile everything and there is a toolchain directory there's a toolchain directory that we want to skip there's a a to z to here let's see what is it yes and we probably want to exclude a little bit more we also want to exclude the logs maybe everything with dot log 
So these are the T2 build locks that we don't need here. So I did a compress. No, I didn't compress. You can also it was compress set or C. It's always annoying. Half of the problems use set, also used C or something. So these are all the files that you may or may not see scrolling. And then so I have a font for the next time. And is this, by the way, CPU limited or no way this is? No, this is CPU limited already. Or RV or is this system? Oh, no way this is. No, this is CPU limited already. There is system and user space. This is hmm. anyway. So that system we have a new. A new we already start to receive these files, obviously, to check 30,000 here. I also changed to build a minimal desktop. Historically, I only cross compiled minimal without Xorg, but all these vintage machines are a little bit slowish to compile things, and it's certainly neither fun for me nor for you to emerge things for a day or week. Also, the P3 is still half a decent Zorg Tano, so of course, requires a week or so to build all the Xorg and so on. So, I will probably change to cross compile who will minimal desktop only RxVT Unicode and black box or something. Maybe over time I add another thing or two. We'll probably not cross compile with GNOME or actually we could maybe cross compile an XFCE desktop or so. Anyway, yeah, this is why I probably change to minimal Xorg, although the thing is nowadays the download sizes don't matter so much anymore. Historically that was a limit. Nowadays it doesn't matter if it's 200 or 500 megabyte, but one drawback for me will be that I always have to fight much more cross compile stuff. Even today I had to tweak quite some things again that say cross compile. So we can try if we have already enough files. Oh, we have already. So then this binary is worked. So while this still is syncing here, we still have enough libc and linker and such to have here a non terminal type Linux. Yeah, this is files are not yet there. But we have already enough for the bash and oh, SSH here stuff appear too. So the problem is this is a new Xbox server. Do we have already? Um, okay, I don't want to kill this P3 starting some X server in case something is not 100% super stable. Because now we have the challenge, of course, this is everything tip of subversion trunk of T2. That means latest Xorg and such. And the driver I have here, I will probably push this maybe to GitHub. I have to check with the free desktop people if they want to have this in GitLab. I don't really use GitHub for this. I'm wondering if I put it at extra code or my personal GitHub that I don't really use such much or GitLab. Because as I said in the earlier video, I'm probably one of the few people who has this old sources laying around here. This PS3 stuff with video acceleration, with XR, 2D acceleration and Xvideo. And I'm not the author of this. Other super clever people have done this. But somehow they vanished or have other hobbies, something. I will obviously publish the whole history of this. The old and the new one. The new one had much more acceleration here, X video, but was much more complicated. And then I need to continue hacking on those because I used the old one because it was simpler and I got it barely working. Maybe I can. So this zoom finished. So let's zoom this here to the file system and maybe we start X just for the fun of it. Okay, this lit. Why do we have this running now? Hmm, what had I done there that this happens now? Yeah, you see, there's uh, need to check all the bits and pieces again and things like this here. Yeah, but um, maybe we quickly reboot here. Or can we still reboot? Maybe this 3.5 system was the one I had patches for or something because there were a couple of patches required for running in Game OS. Maybe that is the reason. It's really funny though that USB always was it instable already with Windows 95. Maybe just for the fun of it, I quickly try to start the frame buffer X driver just for a quick test today. I guess it should work on the frame buffer. Yeah, let's just try it. Since we need to bind mount dev proc this and dev pts and Then let's see what is what is xconfig t2 doing. Ah, this matches to us uh, super smart. That is what you get from simple pattern matching. So 
So cannot open TTY zero. Um, that could be that this old UDIF config has no TTY. That is what you get mixing such vintage installations. Super clever. Some links I've done there who can see the mistake. Virtual console TTY zero and six and seven, or maybe only seven. Not sure how the allocation works if it gets the next three from the kernel or if it just tries all. What is next? Screen init failed for driver. Screen info succeeded but modified mode. Hmm. What are we even running in? Twenty four bits. Hey. At least we got something, so this is not accelerated. Um Actually not too bad for not accelerated anyway. So this is not yet great again. This is only freshly working system. Just to prove that all the binaries works. Everything is cross compiled. This is uh, the latest of everything. And so we got here version. So as you can see, this is compiled from today. Is it today? Is this clock even right? This clock is right. Is it so late? I hope it's only 2146 so and yeah GCC 8.2 so this was only a test of my freshly compiled binaries and also the dark hacking theme here that was intentionally today a little bit wondering how this video comes out thought a little bit better lighting here for hacking around on vintage stuff and next I need to create an ISO or even USB stick so that it shows up and boots in petit boot also matching kernel old enough for this device tree and then in the upcoming episode we also need to continue hacking on the X driver to have hardware acceleration because this right now is pure software just for the test that XORG works and with this it is time to say goodbye for tonight and ah, unicode stuff I hope this I hope this dark theme at night comes out nice don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.